Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Looking at the passage just read to us a moment ago, <clears throat> uh, it's one of my favorites, I guess, maybe one of yours, I don't know. But you look at the passage and the understanding there of what the church was going through in the first century. They were being persecuted on all ends. They were dying for their faith. They were seeing horrific deaths at that. Yet God, through John here, praised them. And in particular, back in verse 12, though, he mentions the patience of the saints. I've always liked that phrase. Uh, back in chapter 13, he says the patience and faith of the saints. So you see that phrase <clears throat> and the understanding there of what they were going through. And I want to look today more at the word patient or patience and how it's used in the Bible and how, how what it meant. And it, and it meant a little, means a little differently than what we often think about it. We think of patience of waiting for our order to come when we go to a restaurant. We think of patience sometimes when uh, somebody that's uh, doing something else for us hasn't brought it out quick enough or something else is going on in life or whatever it may be. We think of patience like that and folks that's really not patience, it's not biblical patience. Biblical patience has the idea of holding or bearing up something. It has the idea of enduring and holding out for long periods of time and waiting for something that we know that's coming in the future. And that's what we're going to look at this morning from the passages. It means almost, it, it's, it's used like, one writer made, it, made mention of it, he said it's like a weightlifter bearing up a bar. You ever seen those guys and gals now that uh, lift weights professionally? And they pick those things up and they're straining and grunting and sweating and I just keep thinking why, but they do it. But they hold that thing up and they shake and they shake and they shake and then oh, they'll grunt and they'll throw it or jump it or whatever they're gonna do. Well, that's really a good picture of biblical patience. A little ugly looking at some of those power lifters, I guess, but that's the idea. And we think, well, one day we're gonna have our, our load to carry. Let me tell you something, when you come up out of the water, we hand you a towel, but God hands you a bar with weights on it because that's our load. We've got a load already. When we become a child of God, we are already carrying up or quite literally bearing up our load of life. And our load of life is not little things, menial things, but it's what we, how we deal with things, that we have the patience to endure difficult situations in life. And that brings us, what we're going to look at this morning on the first section of this anyway, is in particular the second coming here, but I think there are a lot of things that can apply to other areas of life as well. In both the passages there in 2 Thessalonians and then again in James chapter 5, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we see the church in difficulties. In Thessalonians, first and second, both really, we have the church that has... They have some misunderstandings about the second coming. They have some misunderstandings about life. They have some misunderstandings. They've been lied to. They've been done all kinds of wrong. Yet, Paul praises them. He says, we can boast about your patience. We can boast about your endurance. We can boast how you've endured all these trials, all these tribulations and persecutions, he says. You've endured all these things. That's how we can see something in you. And notice something about that as well. Folks can see our patience. Just as people should see our faith, they should see our patience. I mentioned back in Revelation 13 and here and in other passages where you see patience and faith put together, it's because they have to be together. Without faith, I can't have patience, biblical patience. Without patience, I can't have biblical faith. They're put together for a reason and they're conjoined actually Almost, almost together that you can't have one without the other. And that's what these Thessalonians were dealing with. They were dealing with folks that didn't like them. Dealing with folks that hated them. They were dealing with things even inside the local church there in Thessalonica. But he says, we are going to boast about what you have to deal with. And 
Folks, sometimes looking at life and looking at the things we do, James mentions a similar statement there in James chapter 5 before we move on. He says not only that, but listen, their faith in the second coming is, he says, you have need of this patience. You have need of this, quite literally, this endurance. It's just like when the farmer, he plants a seed and he waits for the crop and he waits for the soon and the latter rain, he waits for all these things there. He says, so shall you for the coming of our Lord Jesus. You should do the same thing. The farmer has to learn patience. And if you've ever done much farming or growing of any kind, you understand what patience is all about. You want that stuff to come up. Well, he says our faith is going to do the same thing. And as you look at what the church in the first century was going through, compare that with us. Look at how we deal with much the same thing. We, don't, we may or may not have folks there in James 5 in a similar situation. Maybe we're being oppressed for our wages. That's what was going on there. Maybe we're being doing work and not getting paid for it. Maybe something else is going on in life. Maybe we're not being paid enough for the job we're doing. Well, we like to fuss about that, don't we? But you know what's still going to happen? You know who's still in charge? God's still in charge. And you know what patience is going to do? That we're going to look at a different side of how we understand what we're being paid or whatever else it may be in life. You ever stopped and find the bright side in things? Have you just tried it? Just try it sometimes. It's a wonderful Christian thing to do. At least I'm getting paid. I've known folks that work for free. Or that have worked and thought they were going to get paid at the end of the job and didn't get a dime. At least I'm getting paid. At least something is going on. I noticed a moment ago I've got a white spot on the collar of my shirt. Isn't that awful? I, could, I should have cleaned that up before I came in today. But you know what the bright side is? At least I brushed my teeth. Because that's what that is. That's toothpaste. Aren't you happy? There's a bright side to things. And even in, even in dire situations as these folks were and as we sometimes find ourselves in, folks, we have to find that bright spot. And that's what patience does. It's, it's holding fast. It's enduring. It's bearing out. And no matter what that weight is upon us, we are not going to crumble. You ever seen those guys that don't want to crumble with the weight? They want to win and they've got 10 million pounds over their head and they're straining and straining and straining but they've got to hold it so long or they don't. We're going to get to let go of the weight one day. One day the weight is not going to be there. Matter of fact, even while we're here now, the Bible says that Jesus can take care of that. He can take care of We have a yoke, right? That we're supposed to take upon us. You know why? Because Jesus pulls with us. Matthew 11, 28-30. He's pulling with us. That's why the yoke is given. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Right? And when we do that, patience is going to make that enduring time or make us endure that time even better. The worst thing you can find in life, one of the worst things you can find in life, is people that don't know how to find that bright side, who don't know how to have fun, even in a bad situation. But all they do is fuss and fuss and fuss and can't won't stop until you fuss with them well don't fuss back point out the bright side on things understand about the patience of things that are going on well my car is broken down well it's going to get fixed one day or we'll get another one well you don't know that's just the way it's going to be well i don't want to worry about all the stuff that's not going to happen well this is not going to well what about this right and we patiently endure those things sometimes if you go back in galatians chapter 6 we're kind of supposed to help each other bear one another's burdens. I thought I'd read that somewhere. You know what that means? Bear one another's burdens. Help them along with it. He says later on, then you've got to bear your own burden. Wait a minute. I thought we were going to have someone else do it for us. But you see the idea there of joining in and helping each other? If you can help me, help me. If I can help you, help you. I'll help you. And that's what patience does. It endures through those things <clears throat> no matter what the situation in life may be. Sometimes those hard times get here and they are just too hard. They are so difficult, we think, that it's hard to get through and patience bears it out. Or as it's translated here uh, in both of these passages, endurance. They, they, they could be translated either way. But it's still that picture of enduring or bearing up a load, a heavy load. These, both these passages from Hebrews really, uh, really uh, have that application 
as any does in all the New Testament, I think, because they were getting so much pressure, but they were getting so much pressure from the Jewish folks in and around Jerusalem. Now, it's named Hebrews because these folks are Jewish of nature. They are not just Jews. They weren't just proselytes. They were Hebrews. They were the, the pure, if you will. Yet now they converted to Christianity. And you read through that book, you'll see over and over and over again how people of their own, of their ex-faith, if you will, are more or less putting the pressure on them and they're looking for them to come back to Judaism. Jesus is not the way. Yet Paul, or whoever writes this epistle, continually tells them to hold up. That is to bear up, to strengthen up, and to reach out to one another. One thing he says here is, here's what you need, endurance. Endurance. You have need of endurance. You need to learn because what they're wanting to do is literally chuck in the towel. What they were literally wanting to do was give up. To just give up the faith, to no longer look at what they were trying to see, that heaven is their goal, but to give up on all that was dear to them just to relieve some pressure. That's it. Pressure is too strong. The Jewish teachers and the Jewish friends and family around them was putting much pressure upon them and all they finally said is that's enough give in you know I used to say a long time ago and I've stopped a number of years ago saying this the people say about talk about complaining they said well no need to complain because it doesn't get you anything that is a lie complainers get their way because we want them to shut up right they just keep on and on and on and on well, you know what's happening here? People are complaining to the church, these Hebrew Christians here, over and over and over and over again. And you know what they say? Fine. Here's my Christianity. I'm going to revert to a Judaistic lifestyle. I may not necessarily like it. I may not necessarily believe in it. But at least the pressure is off. Thus the words, you have need of endurance. You folks need patience. You're giving up too quickly. You're giving up on heaven as your goal. You're giving up all the precious promises of God through Jesus Christ because somebody wants to give you grief. And all throughout this book, and especially in these last few verses of chapter 10, one thing we see is how they need to strengthen themselves. That's why I could later on say, do not cast away your confidence. Confidence, just another way of saying faith. Don't take it and throw it away. It's using, he's using a militaristic term. Greeks and Romans both used it a lot, and other nations too, of throwing away a shield. What's our shield in the Christian armor? But faith, right? Ephesians chapter 6, a shield of faith. Well, that's exactly what they're doing. They're throwing the shield down because they no longer want to fight. You know what that shield is for, right? To deflect all the fiery darts of the wicked one. To stand strong. To protect us. And that's what these, these Hebrew Christians have done, folks. The same thing that Christians still sometimes do today. Let me encourage you today to <clears throat> develop that patience. To develop that biblical patience. It, it's used in context throughout the New Testament of one who is not being treated fairly but still has to stand up to the fair God we serve. Who still has to do the right things because patience comes, what we have to have patience for comes differently for all of us. There are different situations. There are different things. If something that you deal with doesn't really affect me as much, much as my patience, I don't have trouble with it, it's not that big a deal. But you know what? I still need to help bear that up with you, do I not? You still need to help me bear up things with me. That's that, that's that cohesiveness within Christianity that we help each other be patient and have that endurance that God wants us to have. When you get in chapter 12 there, after chapter 11, we look at the, the roll call of faith, we should sometimes call it. But you look in chapter 12, he's giving us that wonderful lesson on how to be a person of faith, how to be strong, how to, maybe we've thrown the shield down, but pick it up. Christianity says nothing about, I may throw my faith away, but you know what I can do? I can go find it and pick it up. It's not very far away. And I can pick that shield up. But he says, here's the thing we've got to do. When we looked at all 
things around us. Look at that roll call of faith. Understanding about things that have been going on in life. Understanding how difficult things are. That we can then be strong. We can look under the cross. We can understand about Jesus. We can see the things that are before us. That we can pick up the, the pieces that are around us. That we can pick up the shield of faith. That we can live that life. That endurance is going to be there. That I can, especially he says in verse 2 there, that I can look unto Jesus who's the author and finisher of my faith. That I can see that he saw the joy that was before him. And that he, now listen to the word here. He endured, he patient, endure the cross. Now that's a lot more than waiting on the meal, isn't it? To be patient during the cross. Because it wasn't just the time he spent on the cross. He knew what was coming well before he ever got to the cross. He knew what was coming from eternity, right? He knew of his death. He knew of what was coming. He knew of all the things that were going to happen. Yet he endured it until the very end. He understood about patience and the patience of the saints. We could draw near. We can still draw near. As he talks about here, looking unto Jesus for those things. Folks, when I'm looking for patience, when I'm looking for endurance, can we stop a moment and look just at the life of Jesus Christ? Did he endure? Did he, was he patient in all things? Did he bear up? Did he reach out? Did he hold up? Did he hold up no matter what the stresses of life were, even on the cross? He still learned patience. And when we lose ours, we're just not looking to where the Savior wants us to look. We're not looking for those things and to have those things there. We can't run the race that he wants us to run. Because he says we should run the race with endurance. Same word used again. Or patience sometimes is translated. We don't get in a hurry when we run. You've seen people that get in a hurry when they run, don't you? A lot of bad things can happen. Especially some of you people are getting older. <laughs> you just can't run as fast or as, or as fleet foot as you once could, right? Well, what about faith, though? We've talked about that earlier, patience and faith and how they go hand in hand. Can we not have the patience and faith of the saints of the first century? Folks, we need to. We're practicing the faith they did, right? We're practicing the holy faith of the first century. We're understanding how they lived, how they worshiped, what they did, all of salvation, all those matters are right and true, and that's what we're supposed to do. But you know what we sometimes forget? The patience and the faith. The patience in particular of the first century church. How they endured so much. Matter of fact, Paul says in a lengthy lesson really there from about verse 18 of chapter 8 until the end of the chapter, talking about folks that how we are enduring, how we are suffering, how the whole world is suffering and enduring from because of sin. Yet he says it's in hope that we're saved. And not a hope that we think of in this world, well, I hope I can get that job, or I hope I can pick up that car, or I hope I can do whatever else it is, but a hope that has desire and expectation. That's what Bible hope is. That's where my hope rests, and that desire and expectation is not going to come to fulfillment, he says, until we endure with patience. We have the patience that God wants us to have, to look beyond it, because he's just been talking about, look at how hard life is. Even, he says, the whole creation groans and travails until this very hour because of what sin has caused in this world. And we're just one people among many who've had to deal with it. But just as the Roman church had to understand something about it, those sufferings, he says, of this present time, he says they're not worthy, not to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us, back in verse 18, that's not where it is. He said what we're looking for is future. For a hope. The hope of the, thing, of the future of resurrection. The hope of future of eternal life. The hope of future of no more having to bear up these burdens. No longer having to hold these things up. No longer having to worry about patience. Because he says, Paul says there in 1 Corinthians 13, not only about patience, he says it bears all things. It endures all things about love. It has patience. It has all the things you're ever going to need. It believes all things. Love is going to bring about the patience. Notice how we keep coming back to love, faith, patience, endurance. 
It just rolls up into one nice big ball, doesn't it? That God has put in place for us. When I feel like my faith is not enduring, I can look to patience. When my patience is not right, I can look to love. When my love doesn't feel right, I can look to faith. You see how these things are put in order? And people say human beings wrote the Bible. <laughs> and made it all come together in such perfect harmony? I don't think so. We're getting patience. We're getting the endurance because God has put it in place for us, folks. He knows. I said earlier, and I'll say it again, when we come out of that water, folks, we're just beginning. And we're bearing up loads almost immediately. Maybe somebody doesn't like us. Maybe our family doesn't like our decision. Maybe it's the spouse. Maybe the whoever else it may be. The cases are a million. But we've got help in that. We can look unto Jesus, right? Hebrews writer told us. We can look to each other back in Galatians chapter 6 to help us bear up that load. That's the thing about it. If you look at those, those power lifting com uh, competitions, you know what happens? They got to do it all on their own. We don't. We can have as many people as have come to our aid help us carry the load, folks. And that's what we have. And that's what the world doesn't have. People can flake out. People can give up. People can no longer want to help. And people can be standing there all alone. And the worst thing in the world is for Christians to think we're alone. Because we are never alone. God's working with us. God's helping us. But folks, why can't we reach out to somebody else to help with patience? To help with that enduring spirit? How do you get through these times? We might ask. How can you help me get through this? Can you help me get through this? Do you know somebody else who can? What's it matter? We think one of us has got all the answers to everything in life? I'm sorry to disappoint. <laughs> we don't. But look at all the people we got to choose. Just keep picking on people. You'll get somebody after a while. The right person will come along, and the right person's going to help, right? Right? Two of you are going to help. Three now. Well, we are rocking and rolling. What a good church we've got here. We're going to help each other, folks. I'll say it for you. Because that's the way the church is designed. I say that a lot because that's what the Bible teaches. We are part of the body. We have a head that teaches what to do. And he never falls. We may get weak. We may lose our patience. We may lose some endurance. But I said a moment ago, you can always pick it back up. The shield of faith, it's not like the days when they were down and run, tuck tail and run in battle. We may do that too. It happens to the best of us. But we can always go back, shake the dust off and pick it up. Because we endure. We're patient. We are patient people looking for that hope, looking for that blessed hope, the Bible refers to it often, of eternal life. Now listen, I think the greatest thing about patience is God's, that He's patient with, patient with us. And you talk about an illustration when you see that, when you see that God is not willing that any should perish, so that all come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Timothy 2 and verse 4, that He wants people to be saved, that he is, matter of fact, a similar word used in 2 Peter chapter 3, long-suffering to us. The, 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 the English word is just like it looks. One who suffers, endures a hardship a long time. That's what long-suffering really means. And that's what it means from the Greek language too, which is sometimes translated as patience or as endurance. God endures us. But his endurance of us, his patience of us, and I think the best word to use is long-suffering of us, is that he's holding out for us. And he's bearing us up. He's holding us up. And he's doing that by means of, because like I said, he doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants us all to come to the knowledge of the truth. And folks, if I've not come to the knowledge of the truth, means I haven't obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. I haven't looked upon that blessed hope. I haven't understood the hope that Jesus has given us through his life, through his death, and most of all, through his resurrection. And I have not become a child of God. That's where patience is going to begin. I told you, bear bad news again, but we've got a load to carry as a child of God. But if you think you don't have a load to carry as one outside of God, you need to look again. There's a load there too, but in particular, it's the load of sin. Jesus can take it away. He can take it all the way through His blood and make you a child of God. 
and instill in you not only the, the hope that's going to instill the patience and the faith that's going to back up the patience and the endurance. And that's what Jesus Christ can do for you. Folks, if you're here today and you have need of Jesus Christ, why don't you come while we stand and while we sing?